thank you for WC2 for inviting us to this uh, uh, lovely conference. Uh, I am here with two of my colleagues, uh, so uh, uh, whatever questions regarding what we do, not only on the interoperability uh, program is uh, welcome and we can answer them probably. Uh, so uh, today I will be speaking about uh, what, uh, what we do and uh, uh, the most important thing is for you to understand the context. Moldova is a relatively small country compared to uh, European uh, area. We have a 3.5 million population. Uh, the capital is in the center geographically of the country, so everything is uh, uh, in our capital. I mean, all of the ministries, uh, central authorities. We are a multilingual country, which is quite important for us because everything we do is usually translated at least in two languages, Romanian and Russian. Uh, and uh, we have a quite uh, high penetration of uh, internet and uh, mobile uh, coverage. Um, uh, by uh, international rankings, we are somewhere around the uh, 10th, 10th country in the world, uh, co uh, uh, proportionally to the population and the area. So, uh, doing, uh, starting to do the e-government uh, to uh, make uh, everything, fa uh, to digitize the government faster is uh, something that is uh, baked up by these uh, facts. So, the government center is a central uh, authority, which is the CIO of the government. We are operational from 2011. Uh, we are uh, subordinated to the st state chancellery, uh, which is uh, uh, a ministry under uh, prime minister, which organizes and uh, drives the agenda of the go whole government. And we are responsible for gov so-called government e-transformation agenda. So what's the main scope of what we do is the, uh, to digitize and make available uh, uh, all of the public services that can be electronic uh, as fast as possible and as high quality as possible. So what this means actually is that we are coordinating uh, central and sectorial uh, agendas, uh, architectures, and uh, what we, our target is to help everybody to do their own work in their own sector. So, what we started to do is to build a platform for that. So, a, any electronic service is not simple, a simple form or a website where you can fill in a form sign it or whatever. But it requires the whole infrastructure behind it. So uh, electronic services that citizens or uh, public sees is only at the tip of an iceberg, as uh, you, most of you probably know. So let's follow up. Uh, let's see what we've done to simplify this. Um, in, this in the electronic services context, you don't know who you're speaking with. So, first, the first question is authentication, so or identification of the citizen or, or business you have to speak with. Another question is uh, uh, the uh, citizens or uh, other uh, uh, organizations have to uh, put some signature on some documents to uh, give the rights to the. Uh, public servants to make the decision. So uh, requests must be signed usually uh, in all cases. Another uh, important service is uh, electronic payments because if uh, the, payment is not the, uh, the payment is not electronic, you cannot deliver fully an electronic service. So uh, what we also uh, concentrate on is electronic messaging because in uh, uh, digital world, you have to communicate a lot and even, even more maybe with your citizens uh, to uh, say about the progress of their requests and uh, maybe proactively prevent something or uh, remind them to do. Also, uh, because electronic services are uh, available or sh should be available 24 hours 
from any point in the world, uh, a good hosting platform is required. So we also uh, covered that. Uh, then the subject of this uh, speak, uh, of my speak, is this interoperability framework and the uh, interoperability platform which uses the WC2 stack. And uh, I will come back to that in a short term. Also, uh, sometimes the public services result in some uh, deliverables, it's either documents, papers, or whatever else. And uh, the delivery is uh, what closes up the whole requirements to, uh, requirement to have the electro full electronic services. And uh, not the last, but not the last, last one, but probably one of the most important one is client support because uh, citizens are uh, not always uh, ready to use these uh, innovations and uh, may have problems. Uh, and uh, client support is really helpful in uh, uh, providing these electronic services. So, actually, actually, we solved almost all of those problems by uh, implementing uh, the so-called M services, and we found uh, fancy names for them. Uh, and you can see there the dates. These uh, platforms were uh, launched. Uh, we are still working on uh, M delivery. And uh, this M letter is from Moldova, mobile, modern, whatever you, you want. But uh, all of them, by name, pr practically say to you what they do. So you can try to open now, for example, the website mpass.gov.md or msign.gov.md, there is an English version for them. You can, you can uh, look through them what they mean. But today I'll concentrate on the uh, interoperability platform, which we call mConnect. So, the data exchange between uh, public services is uh, probably the main foundation for electronic services. Non none of the informational system in a government is isolated. Uh, they were developed usually as isolated because the budgets and the strategy uh, were usually sectorial and uh, no uh, central authority or high uh, uh, ranking uh, people are, were coordinating them. So uh, 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 we, uh, through this platform, want to solve and to make, uh, to uh, facilitate data exchange between agencies. We help, help uh, other ministries and agencies to solve this problem in various ways. One of the interesting uh, uh, thing is that sometimes even inside one organization, uh, people are requested to go to get some paper from one office to the other in the same public authority. This is... Uh, quite strange in the, uh, our times. But this is what happens. And uh, little by little, through data exchange and uh, other things, uh, we try to solve this problem. So we divided conceptually the problem as uh, in uh, inter European interoperability framework. First of all, the legal interoperability is very important because sometimes in the laws you have written that people shall uh, come to, some, to request a service and provide some data by themselves, some certificate, author, uh, uh, li, uh, license or something that is, that is provided from another organization. So the legal aspect of interoperability is very important because, because you have to change, usually, uh, most, many things that specify that. Uh, the other uh, levels are uh, as important as they are, but the most complicated one is the organizational interoperability, which means you have to align business processes in various uh, agencies so that they interoperate and uh, inputs from one activity goes, outputs from one activity goes as input to another, and also these uh, inter-institutional arrangements shall, shall happen. Uh, the semantic and technical part are the easiest one, but uh, uh, are the ones that you have to solve first. This is our experience. 
and uh, we can say that the technical side of it is uh, quite uh, ready uh, to, to be used uh, on full scale, and we are starting now to work on the semantic part. So, conceptually, if all of the institutions would connect to each other, which they had started to do before we came with uh, the solution, is that they would have to uh, collaborate between them in a web of uh, uh, links. So this doesn't only mean a technical contract or a network connection, but also an agreement point to point. Uh, legal debates, uh, law changes, things like that. So uh, we uh, investigated the ecosystem in other countries, what they do. Uh, we have been inspired by Belgian model, Estonian model. We saw uh, what are the differences and uh, chosen to implement, uh, because of our context mainly, a, cent a relatively centralized solution. So what does those lines mean? Not only simple network connection or uh, technical uh, interface, but also uh, legal contract agreement. And uh, uh, whenever you connect uh, your institution as a consumer of data, which is usually why they come to us, you have to also provide your data, because other institutions want, want your data. So this is something we use as, to catch uh, uh, everybody in this, uh, uh, to have a, their role. Uh, started with the legal framework, we have two government decisions. I will not stop in details on them, but these government decisions are uh, ones that set up the concept I just shown to you and uh, uh, set up the uh, responsibilities and an action plan. And the next government decision said that exactly nine organizations from uh, our government shall participate in the piloting phase with at least one uh, integration project. Uh, the technical challenges we uh, uh, solve, uh, want to, uh, need to solve in this uh, uh, program is uh, reduced time to connect to data sources. Uh, the scalability is important uh, part because uh, if you have a relatively central solution, you have to ensure scalability. And one of the first questions from our beneficiaries, which are public uh, agencies, is, uh, is this central solution, will this central solution be able to uh, perform and scale and to make uh, many data, to uh, have many data exchanges pass through it? Uh, also, uh, we already had some uh, national registries to connect, and uh, they use it uh, historically and use till now uh, various uh, technologies various databases, various licensing models, and operated in uh, different contexts. So this is also an important fact, a problem to solve. And the uh, monitoring and complex journaling is another thing, because when you connect all of these government institutions, you have to ensure that uh, uh, this data, which is be becomes uh, uh, available and open to other government institutions, is not abused, first of all. And the second one, is that uh, every, every agency that consumes data uh, already starts, starts to depend on it uh, as they change business processes, even uh, their internal uh, working structure. So if they connect as consumers, they have to rely on it and uh, uh, continue to work. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens in the other institutions that provide data to them. So basically, uh, from legal till technical la layers on, on all levels. Uh, what we try to solve is uh, to connect as fast as possible to the uh, data sources and to not depend on uh, data source availability, uh, willingness to provide data, or even the data structure they use or technology. So what we uh, implemented is a data virtualization concept. So what this means is that you, uh, as a public authority having some informational system, want to connect or need to connect uh, to some data sources. You come to mConnect, you come to us and uh, describe your needs. 
you prove that you have the right to read these data sources because you have the uh, mandate to do some uh, public work. And uh, we provide you the interface, uh, interfaces for the data you need. And it, it shall not matter to you from where this data came. As, as soon as it is public, authoritative, maintained by other government institutions. Of course, this uh, data is uh, coming from another public institution or institutions. So we isolate the interfaces used for consuming data from the interfaces that provide data. So what this uh, solves is that, uh, first of all, the providers of data implement a relatively small number of web services uh, or REST services, and uh, they can provide uh, all of the data to whatever context uh, the other consumers need. And uh, also, the consumers can ask us, and we have several scenarios already implemented for, uh, like that, to uh, get data from multiple sor sources. For example, uh, border police maybe wants to know when you pass the border if you uh, have some problems with the law. Yeah? They can make a call, a single call, to the mConnect, and mConnect can distribute this query or call to several data sources and check various things. And uh, provide an answer to the border, yes or no. There is a problem or not a problem with uh, this citizen uh, uh, crossing the border. So these kind of uh, things are possible through using uh, mediation, uh, which is also encrypting, transforming, uh, slicing, dicing the, uh, the data combining them, and uh, also another, another uh, problem is that you have to know from where the data is actually to, uh, act, uh, to make the real connections. So uh, uh, these uh, in, uh, data consumption, consumption interfaces are based on the definitions in a so-called semantic catalog, which is actually a repository with uh, 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 schemas and uh, uh, data structures used and the classifiers used by data providers. Also, during this transformation and mediation, we log parts of these messages for that uh, monitoring and uh, uh, auditing, uh, further auditing of data exchanges between authorities. We uh, are still working on MLog, which is another uh, government style centralized uh, platform level service uh, when, where you can throw your events and analyze them. So basically, it's a big data uh, concept uh, behind. So based on this uh, concept, which was developed before we chosen the solu solution, we organized an official tender uh, international tender by World Bank rules. We specified all of our requirements, and uh, uh, we had uh, quite a relatively many of offers, uh, including commercial one, open source one. Uh, not only uh, WSO2 was part of this uh, as an open source uh, solution. And uh, WSO2 solution answered to all of our requirements, and uh, one of the uh, uh, one part of the score were also the prices. So the combination of the technical uh, answer and the price of the solution combined uh, is what uh, uh, is at the base of our decision who wins the tender. Uh, and uh, uh, our requirements were, are quite many and because we have to cover many contexts. Uh, and uh, help our beneficiaries in many, f not only what we see now, but many future needs. Uh, so this is why, actually, we use lots of uh, WC2 products. Uh, the, uh, in the middle of this, of course, is the enterprise service bus, which is the main component, which we use, uh, uh, we leverage uh, fully. And the data services server, is the, co is the component that helps us to open uh, data locked in 
in uh, some uh, closed informational system that uh, sometimes in the government context uh, don't even uh, have the sources or uh, the original contractor to contact to develop some uh, new web services for other organizations. So data services server opens up those da for us that data for consumption to other organizations without changing the existing software or databases. Uh, other components uh, are important uh, in uh, their own uh, uh, layers. So uh, we use business activity monitor and complex event processor for that monitoring and analyzing of data exchange uh, flows. And we are now uh, on this way to open up APIs to the uh, general public also through API manager. We also have the elastic load balancer, obviously for managing clusters, uh, identity server for single sign-on in this environment and several others, and the governance registry for the semantic uh, catalog. So, what are the piloting results? We are now in the piloting process uh, till the end of this year. So, intermediate piloting results are, uh, I would say, quite uh, 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 promising for us. We have uh, uh, got to, uh, with our partners, to implement the automation of this whole deployment because each environment, we have several environments, have, uh, has almost uh, uh, around 30 nodes. And uh, uh, managing and upgrading, patching all of this uh, using man manual uh, Logins is uh, quite difficult, so we chosen to automate everything using Ansible scripts. We have now 10 connected institutions, and uh, we used multi-tenancy uh, feature of the WC2 stack quite heavily. Uh, we also found some problems in there, but uh, they were solved by WC2 uh, uh, pr production support and development support for us. We have around 15 integration projects already done, and we have a queue of uh, almost, I don't know, 40 or 45 uh, other integration projects waiting uh, to clarify things, what data should be exchanged and to be connected. Uh, at this point in time, we have around 25 web services, and uh, from January this year, where we declared the platform as ready to be used, till now, till uh, uh, May, we had re uh, real uh, data ex messages exchanged in the number of uh, 700k. Uh, so this may be a small number for other countries, but in the context of uh, 3.5 uh, million population, this number is quite high, and uh, uh, this is only the beginning of our, our journey. Our performance tests, which uh, were part of this project to see where how we can scale if this solves our problem, showed us that we, are, we have a lot of space in, uh, in scalability. Using only two USB nodes, you see the numbers there. So uh, 5,000 messages per second with simplest message, uh, messages and 200 messages per second CPU heavy operation with uh, uh, encrypted and signed uh, messages using the longest uh, practical key uh, nowadays. So this is pretty much enough and covers our original requirements fully. Uh, this uh, piloting showed us several problems and uh, actually the piloting phase is uh, not only for the technical side but also for the legal uh, le level and uh, others. So we uh, now know what legal framework uh, adjustments shall be made. Uh, we uh, are in the process of establishing a streamlined integration process so that from uh, the moment an agency wants to connect and consume some data, uh, data till it can do it, uh, this process shall be f fully described and uh, with uh, concrete deadlines so that authorities that have to give the permission to give data, should answer to, uh, to, the, to this streamlined process as soon as possible. Uh, we are in the process of populating uh, the semantic catalog uh, from uh, using the, initially using, using the definitions from the main uh, uh, registry, uh, from, for example, National Registry of Population. 
Uh, and uh, the next step uh, from, the from the technical side is that uh, data sources have to connect in a generic way so that they don't build many services like they still continue to do, uh, even though it's an inertia process, even though we say to them you can do it in a more generic way. Uh, also, uh, all of those products and other ideas cannot be used fully from the first day, so we are still adopting this solution in an incremental way. And uh, uh, ma making all of this as a government, we already have several requests from the private sector pr companies to consume or provide data to the government and from the government and even between them. So uh, API manager is what uh, uh, has, has to be used for that part. Uh, so basically, this roadmap shows to you that uh, interoperability is uh, not a simple problem. Uh, it's a program for us, and uh, it will take, uh, it will never end as a program for, for us and for any government. I think.